Hello, and welcome to another Devossium Mentality Review on our Fans Project Week. Today, we are going to be having a look at the G3 trailer. Like it says, right there. The trailer is designed and presented by Fans Project. It can be available trucking robot by the company. Trucking robot is not actually included. The G3 trailer is a collectible item, not a toy for age 15 and up. Warning, choking hazards. Small parts make us harm. Swallowed by children. Not for children under three years. What? It's a pretty fair-sized thing, too. As you can see when I stand it next to Jazz. I mean, that's a big box for a big thing. It exists to salute the legend. The legend being your own classics Convoy and or Henke Optimus Prime or whatever. I don't want to continue boring you with the packaging, but I figured I might as well since it's there and it's cool. Look at all that. Yeah. This is going to take a while to open. Have I mentioned these things come with instruction booklets? Okay, now that I've got it out of the package, it seems to have disappeared on me. Uh, damn that thing, where'd it go? Reappear, damn it! Oh, so that's how you've been hiding. Yeah, that's one of the interesting features about this particular trailer thing, is that these mirror panels are applied to the outside of the trailer as a way of sort of making it look semi-invisible. This is kind of a throwback to how Optimus Prime's G1 cartoon character would always end up having his trailer disappeared whenever he turned to robot mode. Well, now you have a somewhat more plausible answer. It turned invisible via mirror... things. With that display out of the way, here is Henke Convoy towing said trailer. It works a lot better than those armor boxes because unlike them, this guy can actually have a rotating axis back here so that he can turn and not have to worry about sliding into a, another truck or a building. And like the commander trailers, it is functional outside of being a gigantic box carried by this transforming robot semi-dude. Let's first start with some backwards interaction with this thing. You see, on the back of the trailer you've got this bumper and this sticker. You can fold it up and underneath you'll see this big chunk of something that you can fold out and unfold into something that you can hitch this thing onto, like so. So now you've made yourself a one convoy convoy, which uh, <laughs> is neat, I guess, but ultimately probably way too cumbersome. So fold that back up, fold this stand down from underneath, open up the back of the trailer, open the doors, fold the ramp down, slide it out, and then do something off-screen to accomplish this. And now we have the ruler. The little guy who is always sitting inside Optimus Prime's trailer. He rolls on a ton of wheels. He can extend, fold bits of himself outward to accommodate something that I don't actually own because I got the Japanese exclusive version of the Commander Armor for Optimus Prime. But you know, it works for other things like smokestack gun. That's pretty neat. And wind vane gun accommodation. Actually, it doesn't need to be extended outward in order to accommodate this one as much. So yeah, there's your roller all armed up to be Optimus Prime's uh, extra gun holding buddy pal. Returning again to the trailer, you can open the thing all the way up after you fold down stabilizers on both sides and then yank him open into his base mode. Now if it wasn't plainly obvious from the start, I've actually tricked out this base 
with a few more things than actually came in the box. That being some extra sticker details that go all around the inside. A little go sign to tell Roller exactly where to, um, go. And some Autobot stickers here and there, of course. And if you didn't see it already, here's an optional sticker for Roller. Little buddy. It's quite a massive... Uh, open base mode as well. I mean, Jazz can even be impressed by this floor plan. If only it had disco lights. Returning to Roller once again, I'll demonstrate the launching gimmick by pushing him into the launching mechanism until it clicks into place. Then reach back and grab the trailer hitch and pull back on it. And he goes flying. Apart from Roller, there's the thing that goes on top of his launching mechanism. The repair drone tower with its arms and a little eye there. He can have all sorts of things roll up into the base and it'll look over and repair it and whatnot. And he can actually open his little pinchers. And it can actually hold things while it works, like uh, an Optimus Prime gun to help defend itself. Or if it wants more direct assault capabilities, you can pull it up even higher and with some Automorph and a little flip-up blast shield, it becomes a turret for full frontal force attack. In fact, the turret can even be manned by Optimus, standing behind it and maneuver his arms up to a place where these pegs here can fit into these holes on his arms. And there he can actually man the turret. It looks kind of weird though, I mean, he's really hung on to it and it doesn't really look like you could see anything over the top of it, even though there is a scope in the back here. See that little sticker? Yep, there you go. Finally, after all that gimmickry is covered, there comes the one last feature of the set, that being the weapon storage. Now, this thing can store your Optimus Prime's default weapons. His wind vane gun can go on a peg there. And his smokestack gun can fit into a thing there. Actually, I would recommend not using Prime's smokestack gun because it's painted and it might end up chipping the paint. Also, if you got Ultra Magnus's upgrade set, there'll be a little thingy here that you can hang his gun on, although it's not all that great. But all that aside, you have other things like these chrome weapons here and here. Now those are to display with other figures. Those extra weapons can work for any of the Lamborghini molds having a shoulder missile launcher, another shoulder launcher for Mirage, a little handgun for Bumblebee which makes this stupid thing superfluous now, an actual gun for Hound instead of this stupid hologram projector, and finally, a Grimlock sword that is very reflective in this lighting condition. So, yeah, that's a lot of features to come out of one trailer. Highly recommendable, I guess, unless you're not into the aesthetic of a small semi-truck carrying a giant block, or, or probably completely into any one given feature, be it minute or big. You can go for some other one that's out there on the market. Anyway, I guess this has been a Devossia Mentality review. I'll see you around. I keep forgetting to ask, the Dana War, War of the Waves, I've had these dumb things for over a year now, and they have gone up significantly in value on eBay. I've been curious about one thing, despite how high price they're going for nowadays, is anyone actually interested in these things? Cause I've been back and forth on whether or not I want to make a profit off these things or just rip them open and have them for you know, display purposes. Okay, that's the end of the review now. Oh god, that wasn't...